choice. He can bring over 20 years of experience in industrial marketing. He has both his presentation skills while working in religion with his friend and mentor, Dr. D.J.R. Sushanti, who is also a renowned faculty member at IM Bangalore. CKM works extensively with Asia's largest software organization, Tata Consultancy Services. Over the past four years, he has customized programs on leadership communication, his daughter Ms. persuasion, and negotiations for the management across the globe from Singapore to New York, attracting excellent feedback. He can also have to be a member of the guest faculty at IM Bangalore, taking regular management de development programs and open workshops. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome
in entrepreneurship is no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And the second most important lesson is if a startup fails, it is the startup that fails and not you. And I don't think I can give a better example than me. 45 years, my business was completely down to the dust. Creditors, just like the morning that Amina said, my credit card life or hovering around me, all pestering me for news. And more than me, my wife felt the ultimate burden because they used to come and pound me, pound my home, and I used to go out and conveniently escape. And life was a misery for me. But on Wednesday evenings, I used to have a smile on my face. My wife was perplexed. Every day of the week, you look beaten down and you look like a criminal trying to hide from everybody. But on Wednesday evening, you have a smile on your face. Just for me. On Wednesday evenings, I told her, I attended a Toastmasters meeting, which was basically an organization to do something with public speaking and what is called listening. And in every meeting, invariably, I got the best speaker's ribbon. So, throughout the week, I was a loser. But on one particular day, I was the winner because of my public speaking skills. And then, not a VC, not a talented banker, but my wife, who was just a homemaker, she told me, why don't you do something related to this? You seem to be good in public speaking, do something about that. I'm not worried whether you make money or not, at least you'll be happy. And because of her prodding, I started going to colleges and, be, and uh, I, I think I was a bit successful because I had 20 years of industry exposure and it was not just a theory issue. I was not uh, giving mantras of the mantras from textbooks, but I knew what was customer service, I knew how to serve customers, I knew what was market research. So I was able to give that value to my students. And then I went to IIMB where I was asked to come and give feedback for a couple of students of PGP. The feedback that I got was good. And then I pursued training, consulting. And after this, this training business has taken me to 17 countries. I've been to Harvard, I've been to uh, IIM, I'm a guest faculty at IIM Mantabar, and I am right now there was no way I could have even thought of doing all this. I'm not trying to say something about me. But it's a startup that fails, it's the startup that fails and not you. And you have to have loads of self esteem There was enough people about to discourage especially when you get into business, and especially when you come to such a high pedigree like the IITs, people are simply going to say, are you mad? You can walk into a multi billion dollar salary now, and uh, they won't be discouraging you, but I think you need to maintain that sense of self-esteem and say, so what? Have you heard of Sharad Babu here in the world? Sharad Babu, one of the founders of I and Nandana, who got a fantastic opening offer, but he decides to say no, he started a venture called Food Game. And what is amazing about him is, his mother sold ADs. And he had to sell those ADs and only then go to his classes. And today, he is eminently successful. And his, what is more important, he takes pride in the fact that I am able to give a life for so many other families. And there are enough Shalat Pambus coming out in order of institutes. And so I think it's a good idea that uh, it's entrepreneurship is a good thing, now it's no more a dirty word. But let's see, uh, you, you've heard a lot about the technical stuff, you've heard, you heard about the uh, good business ideas, amazing idea of uh, Avila in the morning, and he gave us some very good inputs about what to do and what not to do. But I thought, one of the key skills for an entrepreneur is not just technical stuff. One of the biggest mistakes engineers make is, I have a fantastic product, I have got a gift to mankind, I don't need anything else. But more importantly, Please remember, an entrepreneur, when you start off, you need all those hard skills. But if you want to remain an entrepreneur, you have to have soft skills. The ability to meet people, the ability to network, the ability to move into people and how to persuade other people. Right? And that's going to be the subject. How do you persuade your clients, your employers, or even anybody to get things done? Now to do this, to help me do this, to help me understand what are the principles of persuasion, I want to give a five minute exercise for all of you. Uh, when I just turn back, form some small groups of five or ten, and give me an answer to the situation. You are all passengers of an aircraft, and the aircraft crashes into a queue in the deep remote jungle. And there are only six survivors. Am I audible to the last row? Yes. Yeah. 
Only six survivors, pilot of the aircraft, army officer, wildlife expert, a female nurse, a marketing executive and of course you. What I want you to do is first, for 30 seconds, just think about this and put up on your notebooks or keep in mind whom will you choose as the leader to lead you out of the jungle. First, ask them made your choice, turn around, maybe discuss with your friends, 5 or 10, and the group should come to an agreement and tell me whom will you choose as a leader to lead you out of the jungle. Once you give me the decision, I will tell you what relevance this has got to those Good. First, make your individual choice and then turn around, talk to your people and then find out who will you choose. You cannot choose yourself, please. You may be the ultimate guy, but you cannot choose yourself. Except you, among these five, who is that the five people you choose. Quick, just turn around. Take five minutes. Let's
And uh, a very interesting experiment was done in the US. In a remote hospital, 11 p.m., a nurse was attending to a patient in the ICU, a very critical patient. 11 o'clock, she gets a call from a Dr. Smith, whom she's never met in her life, and he tells her to administer a drug, thrice the normal dosage. And the nurse, by her training, knew if she administered the drug, the patient would collapse immediately, but she was ready to give this drug because the instruction came from Dr. Smith, whom she's never met in her life. Now, that is the importance we give for designations. So, if you have sufficient authority, if you have some kind of competence, make use of that because people are easily overawed by this. A software engineer, now he was trying to do a project on automation, he was trying to make a presentation and he sent out a mail to his leaders. He expected a good number to attend, but hardly five people attend. Next week, he sends the same mail. He says, Anurag Gupta, Automation Architect. And believe me, 20 people attended that work. Simply because of the title, Automation Architect, and that has a remarkable change. So if you have a good designation, make use of it. Second, expertise. I don't have to tell you. So they say, Pujite Raja, with one Sarvatra Pujite. The king is respected in his own terms. A learned person is respected all over the world. So if you have expertise, that is welcome all over the world. No better example than the IITs who are welcome any corner of the world. A third, I mean, have you heard of Chuck Steel Safe? They manufacture bank lockers just like Godrej in India. And they are an extremely famous brand in the US. They wanted to market their products in Singapore. And like all good advertising executives, what one guy said was, let's have a fancy actress peddling this uh, you know, safe, the bank safe. But then there was a guy who said no. And then they went and caught on a burglar, a thief, who's got 15 years of experience in breaking safes, just like Jack Karikor or uh, you know, Charles Sobra. And he was asked to give a statement, in my 15 years of bank safe breaking, I've tried my best to break into a chump's team safe, but has never succeeded. <laughs> then we do usually, the actress or the thief? <laughs> Because he is an expert, I don't need to such limits. But the fact is, if you have expertise, I think you can easily persuade anybody. An 11 year old schoolboy hacked into the website of Microsoft many years ago. And Microsoft prides itself in having one of the most secure uh, servers. And normally he should have been handed over to the cops. But what will be out against us? Here is your appointment letter, when are you going to get Now, this is the kind of respect that people give for expertise. So, if you can cultivate this, I think it's a very, very powerful form of persuasion, right? Okay, my question is, or your question should be, what do I do when I don't have both of them? Let's look at what are the other forms of persuasion, especially when you get into business, when you have not yet demonstrated your expertise, and you don't have sufficient authority to claim what you have to, then let's see what are the other ways in which you can do this. Be careful to wear a black suit 
or a grey suit. If you wear a brown suit, you are considered not born. That is not culturally acceptable. So dress makes a lot of... Uh, let's say you go to a media company like Yahoo or Google, it's perfectly okay to have an informal sense of dress because they themselves are not very formally dressed. So tailors. The third is, that is you, the way you speak. Please remember, I am not talking about vocabulary, I am not talking about uh, great histrionics, but can you make your message in a crisp, clear and compelling manner? The previous speaker spoke about the elevator pitch. Elevator pitch was derived from an executive. <clears throat> now he was ready to make a presentation for 40 minutes in front of the CEO. And then the CEO comes and says, look here, I want to catch this plane to Dallas. Come, come up with me in the elevator. Before we reach the 15th floor, tell me what you want. So you have to force a message in just three minutes and that you have to have the evidence. Because what happens when you ask the people to make a pitch, they go on and on, they do data duffing, but you have to have brevity. And brevity is the soul of any message. Right? So make sure your message is tuned very, very well. I'd like to tell you about three things you have to keep in mind when you compose your pitch, especially your PowerPoint presentation or you're composing your uh, delivery accuracy, brevity and clarity. You have to use the right kind of words, don't use unnecessary padded language which may not make sense to the other person. I am reminded of the thief who was brought to the court and the judge asked him, why did you rob a bank? And the thief says, because you are robber, that's where the bank money is. <laughs> I think you, I can't think of a more accurate answer than that. Right? So think of accurate words and that's very very important and uh, my friend was saying, I think it was on the dot, VCs, bankers get really exasperated when you start talking about the greatness of you, the founders, your grandfather and things like that. Whereas what they are interested in is, what value can you give to me and you have to say it in three minutes. So can you make this message accurate? Second thing is brief, that is be brief in your message. Don't put some 50 slides in a one hour presentation, that's also going to irritate the people. Can you make it very very concise? In a philosophy exam paper, the only question asked for 100 marks was why? And the most interesting answer was why not? <laughs> I think it was brevity, but it had a lot of meaning also. <laughs> clarity, C stands for clarity. Please make sure your communication fits the audience. Do a lot of research. Who are you going to be talking to? Your VCs may be good in their subject, but they may not understand your jargon. So don't jargonize your presentation. Make it audience friendly. Do as much of preparation as possible. Preparing for a presentation without the audience in mind is like you writing a love letter to whomsoever it may concern. So be very focused and have those, in the sense, get your communication to be very, very clear and that's very, very important. Indra Nui, the CFO, CEO of Pepsi, says, one of the key skills that he acquired once he went to the US was the ability to communicate clearly and more importantly, closing the loop in communication. So don't underestimate this. Now, I never used to give this much of uh, importance to all this uh, status, you know, the trappings of dress, the trappings of uh, authority and all that. But I don't know if some of you remember, Washington Post did a remarkable experiment just two years ago. In a metro rail, I don't know whether it's Washington DC or Washington uh, somewhere else, 4.30, a musician walked in. He pulled out a violin and started playing. Half an hour. But he was in tattered clothes. He was wearing some ramshackle jeans and a hat which was very, very different. So he just played some music. Half an hour, not one of them wanted to look at him except perhaps a kid who uh, looked out of curiosity and one person who just looked at them because he had to catch the break, he rushed out. And uh, he had kept a hat and he had a princely contribution of $25. Now what is so great about this? Washington Post had arranged a person called Joshua Bell, one of the foremost violinists of our century. And he was playing that. And the violin that he pulled out was a Stardy Gomez violin costing $4 million. And the music that he played was one of the most exquisite pieces of music from Mozart. Not one of them paid attention to this because they were getting world class stuff. Why? The graphics of dress, not appropriate location. And so, and this is what the people, and the, and the irony was, within a three, I mean, at the six o'clock, he was scheduled to perform in an auditorium in Washington, D.C. 
with the, uh, the tickets for which were sold three weeks in advance, which each of them paid two hundred dollars each. But because of the traffic, people are not really persuaded. So don't underestimate these things. When you do your business, you must have a fancy idea, but take care of these things also that they matter a lot. But for any business to succeed, hype is not enough. Your fancy product is not enough. Are you consistent in your product performance? I do a lot of work for TCS. And the buy rate of TCS is experience certainly. In the sense, if you have to do business with us, you will have peaceful sleep every night. You will not have sudden surprises. We are not going to be impressing you with a flash of brilliance, but we are going to do strange things every time. And what is the uh, courier company, what you can assure you, on time, every time. So can you promise this consistency? Can you deliver what you promise every time? And that's a hallmark of a great person. I am more convinced with the person who can deliver rather than the person who can promise me so much and deliver nothing. But a businessman thing, this is the only thing that's enough. But there is something more called the personal filler, which means you have to focus on improve on your networking skills. In fact, for an entrepreneur, the mantra is network or not work. I am not talking about companies like Amway, where you go and catch people, not that kind of party. But do you, have you got enough uh, strength to meet people? What do you say after you say hello is a big challenge for most of us Indians. We are not able to converse freely. We are not able to talk to strangers. And you don't have to worry about this. Because what your mother tell you in your kindergarten, don't talk to strangers. Don't accept anything from strangers. Today even adults are being told when you go on the train, don't accept anything from strangers. That they'll give you a biscuit and then everything is gone. So this is conditioned in our psyche. So it's not easy to get out of this, but we have to do this. Nandan Dilekar, when he was doing an IIT Bombay, he says he acquired considerable leadership skills because he was the secretary of Mood Indigo. And the way he dealt with many egos organizing visits from other colleges, he says that was a tremendous experience for him in leadership. So never underestimate the power of networking. And there's an organization called BNI, which has made networking a professional front. And the founder of BNI says, don't think networking is just meeting people. There are three things in networking. First is visibility. You will have to move on, make yourself known in the appropriate circles. Now let's say you are offering something to the IT companies and you have to do something to the HR managers. Let's say you are, you are a trainer like me and you need to communicate with a lot of HR managers. I formed a very good forum called NHRD, the National Human Resource Development Organization, which has HR manager all the top companies and they have a meeting every month in one of those fancy hotels in most major cities. They give an opportunity to a business person like me to sponsor one monthly meeting. And what is the benefit they give you? You can place your folders, you can place your people in the front and give your folders to everybody who comes to your brochures. And you can also network with them officially. You don't have to feel bad about this, but the only thing is make sure you sponsor a very good speaker because the attendance is poor. No, you have to be seen. So visibility is one of the first thing. Second thing is credibility. Can I trust this guy? Or is he just trying to do a con job? And third, profitability will automatically fall. And that is the power of network. Never, never underestimate the power of networking. I don't have to tell you, you have the pan IIT uh, conclave. And once you become a member, you will be amazed how IITs reach out to fellow IITs. I have, I have a, a group in my Facebook called MIT Manipal. And uh, when I just have to send one mail, I know the help comes from so many ways. Right? So network officially, network very well. And that is what the personal liking is all about. Then you make yourself likable to people. Second is the age old grandmother's theory that is nothing new, it is not rocket science, reciprocal. That is, <coughs> give and take favors. Now, don't think you will get everything, you have to be able to extend concessions. And how do you distribute this good news and bad news? Let me also offer a some significant, uh, let's see how you guys uh, look at this. Now, let's say you have to give some good news to the client or bad news to the client or the employee or whatever it is. This is something you can follow. Now, now, please listen to this carefully and give me an answer. I am going to give you two sets of situations. Okay. Situation 1, you are walking down the road and you find a 20 rupee bill. I mean, no, 
you pick it up and give. Don't say I will not pick it up. Please, I took it quickly. You will pick it up. Right? That is situation one. Situation two. You are walking down the road. You find a ten rupee bill. No, I will give. Next day you are walking down the same road. You get one more ten. This is situation two. Is this clear? Now, how many of you would be happier in situation one? And how many of you would be happier in situation two? Situation one is today you get twenty rupees finished. Situation two today ten rupees tomorrow ten rupees. Situation one how many can I have a show? Only one. Situation two. Fantastic. You want to give money, get money every day. Okay, forget these two situations. <laughs> Now, <coughs> the situation two. I mean, the one more uh, set I'm going to give you. You come home, open your wallet, and you find that twenty rupees is missing. Forget it. That situation one. <coughs> Situation two: You come today, you find that ten rupees is missing, and the next day one more ten rupees is missing. <laughs> Now, how many of you would like to be in um, happier in situation one? <laughs> the person, or the other wife, who you are happy to get ten uh, rupees every day, and now why do you want to say you are not happy every day? We don't want to lose ten rupees every day. You don't want to lose ten rupees every day, but we're getting ten rupees. You want every day. Uh, you remind me of an employee who got two thousand rupees extra in his salary one month. He did not complain. Next month, two thousand rupees was deducted from the salary, and then he complained. The HR manager asked, "Why did you complain last time?" He said, "Look here, I can count it if you make mistakes once." <laughs>
think the power connection is fine. The number of people are supporting that, endorsing. So whenever your product is, I mean the other person does not know much about your product or your service, make sure you have enough of testimonials, how many people support you. And that's a very powerful form of motivation when you go to a market hitherto unexpected. Now TCS has a relationship with Ferrari. Now I, they cannot make much money out of the Ferrari account, but using Ferrari as a showcase, they've been able to go to many clients in Europe and market their product, where in Europe TCS was not a famous thing. So similarly, any small venture, or especially when you are getting into untapped markets, I think you need to understand, show how many other people are like your product. And the last one is scarcity. What do you think by scarcity? How can you exploit scarcity to persuade your customers? Whenever something is less available, it becomes more desirable. Yes or no? Dr. Robert Chiarani, who has written some good books on influence and persuasion. I'm going to give you a list of books now shortly. Now, he did this experiment with his sons. Two school going sons. He took a transparent jar and filled it up with cookies. Just ordinary Mari biscuit like cookies, nothing fancy about it. One week, none of the boys touched that. They, they didn't even look at that jar. After a week, he removed most of the biscuits, I mean the cookies, and just left one and a half, the same cookies. And these boys fought like mad dogs for that one and a half. <laughs> the simple logic is, when something becomes less available, it becomes more desired. So can you project explain? The mobile companies are doing it day in and day out, isn't it? Monsoon Hangama, last day today, you never get an offer like this again. True, after this you get a much better offer. <laughs> so, harness the power of exclusivity. And more importantly, what happens is, people react to bad news better than good news. A thermal insulating company goes to a part of a town and says, if you buy our product, you will save X amount of dollars. Reasonable logic. They go to other end of the town and say, if you don't buy your product, you will lose X amount of dollars. Both the same. But the sales was considerably more in the second part where they said, you will lose X amount of dollars. So can you project that insecurity and blame, and then that is also, but this has to be done ethically. I am not talking about the wrong or illegitimate means of doing this. All this is fine. <coughs> you can have all this, but if you don't have this, your persuasion will fail. And this is the foundation, as you can write this. What do you think? What do you think that could? Without this, all the pillars that we built will collapse. Any idea what this can? Pardon? Networking is a skill. That is a social or that's a skill, isn't it? What else is important? Pardon? Perseverance. Okay, that is also a skill. Could be in one of those pillars. What uh, is the basis? Self-confidence, okay? Genuineness. Can you give me one more name? Idea. Pardon? Idea. Idea. Some, some other name? Pardon? Honesty. Honesty. These are all part of it. All of them. All, yeah? Credibility. Credibility. Exactly. Credibility. Without credibility, all the business will go for cost. So you can have fancy slogans, you can have a fantastic website, but if you are not seen to be credible enough, your business will fail. And credibility has two components. Expertise and trustworthiness. Can I, are you an expert in the sense, do you know what you are expected to do? Are you solving the problem of the client in the way he wants to? Or are you dumping your product on him? The second is, are you trustworthy? Can you admit your faults to your clients? Can you be genuine? As I used a nice word, can you be genuine? People are willing to. Do. So if you are willing to do this, if you have credibility, people are willing to do much more business with you. It, this is a painful process. It's a slow process. You will find your competitors rushing because uh, they follow some other means. But if you follow this, I think it's long lasting and ultimately uh, this is how persuasion works. So I just round this off with uh, some more thoughts on persuasion. <coughs> and uh, more importantly, please remember, uh, you need to understand that the tangible and the intangible parts of a persuasion. 
tangible part, you know, if you give something, I'll get something back. But the intangible is, can you understand the other person's soft aspects? Can you, uh, can you also deal with people issues? I'm going to show you a very interesting video now. Uh, do we have this audio here? Audio part of this? Yeah? <coughs> How many of you have heard of Tata Steel? Anybody from Jamshedpur? Nobody? Thank you. Now, Tata Steel has transformed Jamshedpur into some kind of an oasis in Jharkhand. Right? Anyway, this is not about the glory of Tata Steel, but this is about the merchant mill heroes plant. Tata Steel has a small unit called the merchant mill plant where they split those steel ingots or bars. Now, one particular year, Mr. M. M. Pandey, the chief of the plant, wanted to achieve a target which was world class, that is 3 lakh tons per annum. This is to be given. 3 lakh tons per annum. And they had consultants, NAP, MN Dasto, and even some consultants from Hungary. All of them said, you are talking hogwash. This target has not been attempted by any steel company in the world. It is not possible for Tata Steel. But Pante took up the challenge and said, I will achieve this target. If you were with Mr. Pante, what are the forms of persuasion? Okay, and let me tell you the, or the size also. 11,000 workers, skilled, semi skilled. How will you persuade these 11,000 workers to achieve a world class tar target not attempted in the life history of Tata Steel? What will you do? What are the normal things that you will do? Tell me. Tell me, keep it for telling me every time I set up this video. What are the normal forms of persuasion that you will do if you are part of Provide a bonus. Provide a bonus. Bonus, yes. Uh, provide a physical uh, benefit. Uh, that will be the first thing to do. Great. Right? Yeah, what else? Provide a sense of security. Sense of security. Lifetime employment. Lifetime employment if you achieve the target, is it? Okay. Tell them they are fired if they don't meet the target. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? Tell them you are going to set a new world record. So what? Probably they will get motivated. You will set a world record. What is in it for me? I will persuade that you are part of the team. Okay. Set a world record. Okay, you are part of the team that will set a world record and you will probably give me one, some kind of a plaque which I will put it on my drawing room. Great, isn't it? Make them understand what Make him understand what difference you are making to the team. Let me tell you something. Pante did all of this. Nothing, nothing of this is wrong. He announced first thing is he said you will get a financial incentive. And that was really worth it. Second, he made them feel proud that they are going to be part of a world record. Instilled that kind of pride in them, Tata Steel, Light Bomb, all this stuff. But apart from that, he did something unique. Now, how many of you don't understand me? Don't understand? But still, yeah, I know. Uh, I had the same problem when I went to the design class. Okay, great. So, just for the benefit of uh, the same guys. Oh, okay, fine. Now, just for the benefit of these guys. Did I show this in design class? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, what Mr. Pante did was, he invited the wives of 11,000 workers to come and visit the plant. Now, his reasoning was, these workers spent 8 hours in the factory but 16 hours at home, and if they do not have a conducive atmosphere at home, these guys are going to watch up the record. Because please remember, we like cancer one year was supposed to be monitored on a day-to-day -day basis, minute-to-minute -minute basis, right? So what he thought was, let me get those wives here, show them around the plant, and openly he said, this is what your husbands do in the plant, I see your accomplished. Don't give them a text, don't start uh, testing them at home, please support them. He spoke in their language and gave each one of them their bars. And just for the benefit of my friends, I'll tell you, what you're going to watch is a feedback by one of the ladies. And there are three or four ladies, but I'll just show one. She says, we were so thrilled that we too were respected and we are called to the plant by Mr. Pandeji. So we have taken it as our, our own target. We have kept that steel rod in the puja room and every day we do our to the uh, thing and then say, God, please make them achieve four lakhs. I mean, three lakh tons. No, first she says 4 lakhs. If you have 4 lakhs, you have to give 3 lakhs. It's a bargaining with the God also. <laughs> the best part is, the best part I read was, 
She, an ordinary Garelu, housewife, she turns around to the union guy is also sitting there. She says, please, don't create problems for our husbands by going on strike. Behave yourselves. <laughs> of course, in Hindi, in a, in a very uh, subtle manner. And then she says, uh, we, we all, uh, uh, what do you call it, encouraged our husbands. It became such an extent that as soon as husband comes home, both the wife and the son are such target kya hua. That guy says, office also same problem, here also same problem. <laughs> And it was done in such a nice manner that, of course, I am showing this video because the target was achieved. I would have shown otherwise. <laughs> and uh, when the target was achieved and the financial incentive of whatever was promised was deposited into the bank accounts of each of those wives. Because one day said, without their support, I don't think any one of you would have achieved that. So please remember, conventional methods of persuasion will tell you, give them financial incentives, instead of sense of pride, do this or even threaten them that you will be fired if you don't do all that. But look at what the management or what they did, did something unusual, went and got the stakeholders and then got completely involved So don't underestimate the tangible or the personal aspects of persuasion if you have good contacts. That's why someone rightly said, contacts get you contacts. And in the uh, business scenario, there's a Latin verse that says, In vino veritas. When the wine goes in, the truth comes out. <laughs> so many deals have been concluded, after, not in the negotiation table, but outside the negotiation table. It is very important for you to have a good working relationship, a personal attitude or relationship. And that's very, very important. Let's watch this video, maybe for three to four minutes, and then you will understand what is persuasion. <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, the authoritative team, everybody had to work together to produce an outstanding product. So this is the challenge of professionalization today. Not only in large organizations, but even for small business like you. How do I get the other guy to uh, approve my product or even agree to my business? And the unfortunate difference today is, the world is not interested in the storms that you encounter if you bring the ship in. That's the question that you are going to be asked. So how do I increase my means which are just, which are fair, and then get my things done? <coughs> when you are trying to persuade somebody, a point of view can be a dangerous substitute. In the sense, don't hold deep-rooted prejudice against somebody. South Indians are like this, North Indians are like this. And then, uh, agreement becomes very, very difficult. That's why Albert Einstein says, I find prejudice a harder nut to crack than an atom. Atom I can crack any day, but not prejudice. And why you are trying to convince people, if this comes in the way, it's going to be difficult. And please remember, you cannot convince everybody. So some of them will have to be and then find out for themselves. So don't try wasting your time trying to convince each and every guy about your idea. If you are able to excite, uh, say, 20% or 30% of the intended audience, consider yourself lucky because today <coughs> the audience is also fragmented. Zig Ziglar is a very famous uh, motivational speaker and uh, marketing guru. Uh, so he says, oh, what are the barriers to a sale? First thing is, no need. I don't require this. No money. No desire. No trust. No hurry. Which of these things is, do you think is most difficult to work? Trust, isn't it? Best. No need, I can somehow manage, I can create. I think 10 years ago, I didn't have a need for a mobile phone today. I just want my son ask me, how did you guys ever manage without a mobile phone? Right? So I can create, I can create a market. Even when there is no money, uh, I can come up with the fancy schemes. Desire, I can definitely create a desire by making your neighbor buy automatically, you get a desire. So, no hurry also by using scarcity. Today is the last day I can create hurry also. But no trust is very, very difficult to overcome. And that's why I said the cornerstone of any persuasion is do you have credibility? That's the most important. <coughs> what are the barriers to persuasion? First thing is when your relationship with the other person has not been established or you have a negative or an ambiguous relationship. Once again, persuasion becomes very, very difficult. When I'll give you the famous story of Abbe Dubois, D-U-D-O-I-S. I think the missionary who came to spread the Christianity many, many years ago. And uh, he found it very difficult to convince the natives, Indians, because he didn't know the language and things like that. And then he said, no, no, I have no, no, switch it off. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, he said, I spoke their language, I ate their food, I, uh, what do you call them? I, I wore their dress, and then they started telling me secret, the secret which they couldn't tell their wives. It's very important to establish a relationship, it's very important to get together, and that's what I mean by uh, relationships. Poor credibility, avoiding poor communication mismatches. If you are going to do business with the Japanese, be careful, land up there on time. I know a couple of friends who went to do business in Osaka, five member team, three members went on time, two members came seven minutes late and the client called off the relationship. Because Japanese are fanatical about uh, punctuality. It seems when you go to Japan, the ordinary electric train, suburban train, I am not talking about the bullet trains, the ordinary train for any reason, if it comes six seconds late, the station master comes down to the platform, bows down in front of every passenger to say sorry. Now that's the kind of importance they give. So you just need to be aware. But if you go to Brazil, you can be absolutely comfortable they are worse than us. <laughs> <laughs> Their sense of timing is actually very bad. They think of us as American as far as punctuality is concerned. So you just need to be aware of this cultural context and then persuasion becomes First time belief systems. Uh, that is also a, a big thing, especially if you go to Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, if you go to Middle East, they have a different belief systems and there is no part in arguing with their own systems, but can I adapt myself to their systems? Conflicting interests, again, a big barrier. So what do you do? These are the four simple methods apart from the pillars that I showed you. 
first thing is establish credibility, very very important. Pray to find the common ground, especially in terms of uh, pray to find common ground and tell you. An IT organization was trying to sell a product to Ugandan government. It's a, it's, a, it's a taxation software product. But they were very new and they didn't have much experience. And their competitors in the field were RPC data from the US, which had a wise like grip in the taxation software business. There was absolutely no chance of this small company, Indian company, getting the contract. But once they did some analysis, they found out that Uganda was a British colony and India was also a British colony. And both were following the same accounting of the British accounting system. Whereas RPC data was an American company, they were following the US GAP system and it would have taken them at least six months to understand this accounting system. And that's where they closed the deal and said, you guys are, in, uh, I mean, they followed the same accounting system, they established a common ground and they got the order much to their own surprise. So you just need to understand, do a lot of research, ask as many questions as possible. Suppose you have a business meeting with a guy called Anuga Bhavasti or something, Google that guy, do a Facebook profile. Does he have a LinkedIn profile? Is he a part of any uh, mailing list? Get as much information as possible. Today, as the previous speaker said, you don't have to have fantastic uh, tons of money. Or the first speaker said, you can just use Facebook and LinkedIn very effectively and create a business. I know a lady called Mukta Dharera. Please visit this website called ireboot.in. I-R-E-P-O-O-T dot I-N. And you'll be surprised at a business model. No fancy investment, nothing. Let's say, <coughs> Uh, I have been working in the industry for so many years and my passion is photography. I have always wanted to do wildlife photography. What she does is, she organizes a camp, let's say Kaziranga Wildlife Sanctuary. She gets some of the best professional photographers and get, uh, organize a camp. You pay some 6,000 or 8,000, go there for a two day a residential workshop and you can come out very well trained in photography. You can actually reboot your life. You want to become a disc jockey, she will get one of the fancy guys. Uh, uh, go through a workshop and she's been doing just this and her only means of marketing is through Facebook and LinkedIn and she was one of the students at IMD when we did a workshop for women entrepreneurs and hers is an amazing story. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you there are many, she's not an exception, there are many people who can do with uh, using social media effectively. So please make use of social media and uh, if, uh, next time if you have the time, I'll try to get a social media expert called Kruba Shankar who is married to some kind of an art form, I am sure it will be helpful for you guys also. <coughs> so, my contributor in this, Aristotle says, the hallmark of a great communicator is to present vivid evidence. Right? Use examples, use a lot of uh, live examples and not uh, stick to statistics of the data. And that is also a very powerful form of motivation. Connect emotionally, please remember, uh, we are all dealing with the clients, so connect emotionally. What did Rathal Tata say when he wanted to come to the Tata Nano? I was uh, riding a car in Bangalore. I was driving a car in Bangalore. I saw four people precariously perched on the school. So what do I do? I just go back and then I said, so he was connecting emotionally with the people. Mohammed Yunus, you heard of Mohammed Yunus? The Grammy fact, Nobel Laureate. Now when he goes to claim money from, uh, say, uh, investors or something, he doesn't talk about statistics. He says in a village called Jabra, I found a lady called Sophia Begum who was impoverished because her entire earning, she used to make money by selling the bamboo shoes and her husband was a doctor. She has got six children and everything she earned had, was, had to be given to the bond broker who had a wise play grip on her and he was charging her an interest rate of 11 percent per day. So there was no way she could get out of this uh, circle. I thought I'd bring some, uh, I, there were oh, 44 people, ladies like that in the Jabra village. I thought, let me bring some change into their lives. And I thought, how much will it cost me to bring some change? And we found that it was a massive amount of 100 US dollars. And I thought, with 100 US dollars, if I can free 44 women from their bondage, I'm sure I can do this to many more people. And that's why I seek your help. Now, needless to add, he gets a standing ovation and down is often like it. Now, what I'm saying is you have to connect emotionally. I'm not asking you how to make audience cry or something like that, but can you build a good emotional bond and that's a very powerful form of motivation. When Bhattan Tata said, the cost of uh, steel has gone up, the cost of raw material has gone up, but a promise is a promise. And with the Tata, I know, I've been promised. That's what I mean by connecting emotionally. <coughs> 
credibility audit only grows out of expertise and uh, trustworthiness. Can I trust you to have the expertise and can I trust you to deliver what you promise? <coughs> Be straight with your clients, don't bullshit your clients. That's the simple message. When Nokia, you remember the DL5 battery price in that direction? Yeah. And the first day, you know what Nokia said? Look here, our phone is okay. The battery we sourced it from Machu Shita. So those are the guys who made a mistake. The customers went mad. They said, look here, I buy a phone from Nokia and not from Machu Shita. You guys are responsible. And then they quickly relapsed and the third day an announcement came. 150 centers opened all over India, just come and we will replace the back. Now that is what is ownership. Don't try to bullshit the client by giving all sorts of judgments. <coughs> Dr. Moss Cantor is a professor of strategy of Harvard Business School and she says, when you make a mistake, face the facts and face the news. Don't try to blame, don't try to come out with unnecessary reasons. Don't uh, look at any problem as you versus me, but we together have a joint problem, then persuasion becomes much, much easier. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of metaphors, examples, and anecdotes which are uh, which will help people because when I say anecdotes, not talking full stories, but some anecdotal evidence about your business, some relevant examples. And studying this completely, don't worry. And uh, emotionally, when Neil Armstrong was asked, why can't you send a robo on the moon? See, this is what he said. Man can be abused in a maze, but robots are just robots. Unless he, he happens to be a Rajni Khan. He's impossible, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I will not go too much into this, but uh, if you are trying to persuade your uh, uh, staff or anybody for that matter, address these five concerns and appreciation, and I'll just go one by one. Please remember, everybody likes genuine appreciation. When I say appreciation, it is not like uh, putting an Excel sheet and simply uh, complimenting him, but can you genuinely appreciate him to be much, much better? Affiliation is nothing but people want to be liked, people want to be a part of a unit and not as the numbers. Most of the, the big firms, you are treated as an employee number and that's why the belongingness doesn't come. They could feel a part of this, uh, your business. Autonomy. <coughs> Recognize each member's freedom, give them enough, don't breathe down their neck, don't micromanage. In fact, I have a nice definition of leadership by E.F. Schumacher, who's written a remarkable book called Small is Beautiful. Not the Formula One chap, but some other Schumacher. He says, an effective leader should be like a balloon man. You see the balloon man? He holds 50 to 20 balloons of fluttering, and the control is just by holding a string. So similarly, uh, can you exercise minimum control over your employees, give them the freedom, but know what is happening and that is what is a hallmark of a good entrepreneur or a boss. Don't take away man's dignity. For you it means nothing, for him it is like that. Recently the subject guys went through a crisis, you remember. Yeah. More than 15,000 people were laid off and many IT companies bounced on them, exploited them and got them on board at half the salary that they were generally got. You know, just imagine, today the times are good and these guys are definitely going to leave that company, but I am very proud to say, Tata's once again PCS. Forgive me, repeat, repeated reference, but they interviewed these candidates and paid them what they are actually due according to market rates. They did not exploit them, they did not bully them. They may stick around, they may not stick around, but look at how they respected the dignity of the human. <coughs> Also make sure they have a clear goal only, even if it's a small business, make sure this guy is responsible for this and you see these people will ultimately give to you. But if you want me to summarize persuasion, I think this is the one. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to go to the forest to gather wood, saw it and nail the planks together. This is all the technical part of persuasion. But instead, desire for the sea. I consciously avoided this word, but uh, you know every speaker must have used this word called passion. 
if you can ignite this passion among the clients or the other people, persuasion is automatic and you don't have to do anything. So I thought that this was very important as far as persuasion is concerned. And uh, it's a nice thing that uh, we are all interested in entrepreneurship and what the country was telling me that EDC is doing such a wonderful job year after year. And I'm sure uh, many entrepreneurs will go out of this forum also and become much, much better. So good luck, Godspeed and God bless you. Thank you.